Hi, my name is Larry Jordan, and welcome to this Power Up webinar on using Photoshop for video. We've used Photoshop for still images for a long time, but it's the integration of using Photoshop with still images for our video and the ability to edit video itself which makes the latest versions of Photoshop especially exciting, and that's what I want to talk about today. This webinar showcases Photoshop CS5.1, which is the current version. However, much of what we do here today can be done in Photoshop Elements or earlier versions of Photoshop, except for content-aware scaling, content-aware fills, and video retouching. My goals for today are to show you how to open, crop, and straighten images, how to improve contrast in your images using levels, how to rasterize layer effects to appear in Final Cut Pro, resize and deinterlace images, and remove blemishes. That can be done in just about every version of Photoshop Elements and Photoshop itself. Then we're going to shift into some cool stuff that's only in Photoshop 5.1 and the extended version. One is content-aware scaling and content-aware fills, which allow us to replace and reshuffle pixels and the ability to retouch individual video frames, which is a great way to repair problematic video. Before I get started with Photoshop, just a couple of notes. There's some keyboard shortcuts which are useful for us to know, but sometimes hard to find. To zoom in and out, it's the same as Final Cut Pro, Command Plus and Command Minus. But fitting the entire image on screen is Command Zero. In Final Cut, it's Shift Z. To temporarily zoom in, hold down the Command and Spacebar keys while moving your mouse left to right. To switch to the hand tool, hold the spacebar down. As long as you're holding the spacebar down, you have the hand tool active, which allows you to move around when you're zoomed into an image. A very cool feature is to hold the spacebar while you're in the process of dragging a selection, say with the marquee selection tool. The spacebar allows you to move the position of that selection before you finish drawing it. I'll show you how this works a, a little later in this presentation. And if you want to duplicate and move an object, hold down Command, Option, and drag that object. It'll duplicate it and allow you to move it at the same time. We're in Photoshop. And before I get too carried away, let's just do some really simple stuff. I want to talk about how we open an image inside Photoshop. First, if the dock is showing, I've got a folder of images down here that we're going to be working with, one of which is an antique car. Grab the image you want to open in Photoshop, drag it on top of the icon in the dock, and the antique car opens. Cool and works great. For those of you that want a more traditional approach, you go up to File, go down to Open, navigate to the folder that has the image you want to open, double-click it, and the image opens. This is a traditional way of opening. But there's a new feature that showed up in the 5.1 release of Photoshop that I like a great deal. I'm a big fan of Bridge, which is a separate application which allows us to see our images. It has this as an icon, BR for Bridge. And when you switch to it, these are the images that we're going to be working with today. I can see a thumbnail. I can zoom in on a thumbnail and make it bigger. I can add keywords. I can search for images. I'm a huge fan of Adobe Bridge. I use it in all of my training at the books that I write when I'm trying to manage all of my screenshots and figure out what I've got and what needs to be changed. What Adobe has done is they've now integrated Bridge into Photoshop. Let me illustrate. We can access Bridge in a couple of different ways. You could go up to File and notice where it says Browse as Mini Bridge and that works great. The hidden way to do it is to click this button right here. See that little MB in a folder? When you click it, it opens the mini bridge. This puts bridge inside Photoshop and allows us to scroll down and look at all the pictures that we have available to us. Now, I've already selected this folder. The way that works is you say, I'm going to go to the computer. I want to go to the desktop. On the desktop, there's a folder called Images, and you navigate to it the same way that you would navigate in any other application. Double-click to open that folder up. And I'll just make it a little bit bigger so we can see what we're working with. And I'll tuck this off to one side right there. The cool thing about using the mini bridge is that you're able to see the images. You can navigate to different applications. If you control click on it, you can open it in different applications. You can assign metadata. And you can also switch over to bridge where you can do moves and copies and groups and all kinds of stuff. So if image management is important to you, and it is for almost all of us, check out bridge as an application and check out mini bridge when you're using it inside Photoshop.